As a first step, the relevant parameters need to be applied. In this case, the presentation type will be a poster. The approach will be a gallery walk. The size of the poster should be DIN A3, and the layout will be vertical. The design form chosen for this example will be a single-sided type, rather than a triptych or a diptych. Let's move on to Microsoft PowerPoint to see how a DIN A3 sheet is formatted. Within Microsoft PowerPoint, click on the Design tab, the Slide Size tab, and then customize the slide size. You will want to select A3, which would stand for DIN A3. The formatting in terms of width and height is automatic. Also select the portrait orientation, as discussed. Moving on to step two, establish a theme. In this example, the conference topic will be on entrepreneurship. The research topic of the researcher's output is entrepreneurship and renewable energy. The theme that we have chosen consists of font, colors, and shapes. In this case, we have chosen Arial in bold for our headers, and the content will be in Calibri. Again, this is subject to both your own customization and the demands of the institution uh, at which the conference is being held. The color breakdown consists of main colors and accent colors. In this case, we'll be using a pale green, dark gray, and a white as the main colors, with a pale yellow gold as an accent color. The background will be formatted in a dark gray. The fields will be in a pale green uh, with a pattern, in this case diagonal stripes, which will be wide and downward. The headers will be formatted with an outline rectangle with diagonal rounding, and there will be no fill. And the content areas will be in white, with a transparency of about 33% so that you can see the field pattern in the background. Moving on to shapes, we will be using rectangular fields and the headers will be rectangles with rounded diagonal corners. The content areas will also be rectangular and as a unique shape we will try to integrate eight pointed stars uh, which will be slightly squared. In order to format the background, right click on the background and open the format option or double click on the background and allow the format tab to open on the right side. The Format Background tab will give you various options to format the background. In this case, we will be working with a solid fill in dark gray. Step three, create a template. In order to create a template, you will need to determine the necessary fields. In this example, Researcher X's research output will best be reflected by the following fields. First, a field with a title and topic and the key information corresponding to the cover page. Then a research problem, corresponding to chapter one, the introduction. Then the findings should be presented in separate fields. Findings on entrepreneurship, renewable energy, entrepreneurial activity in the renewable energy sector, corresponding to chapters two, three, and four, as an example. Thereafter, a separate field for the summary of findings, as well as a field for critical claim and outlook, should be created. Now that we know the necessary fields, we need to select a flow of information. As discussed in a theoretical portion of this tutorial, the flow of information is necessary in order to arrange a self-guiding academic poster. The flow of information is the way of arranging information on a poster. For the purposes of this example, we will be working with a left-right, top-down flow of information. Corresponding to our template, which we determined requires seven fields, plus an additional field here seen at the very bottom, which will have some information about the conference itself, we will transpose the flow of information we selected in the following way. As we have selected a left to right, top down flow of information, the viewer of the poster will read the poster as follows. From left to right, starting with the top fields, moving on downward toward the conclusion. In order to generate our fields, we will be working with rectangular shapes. In this case, we will select insert shapes and select a rectangle. We will then draw out our template in rough form as seen here. You can use the alignment tool to thus realign and resize and distribute your fields. We will now apply the fill to the fields. In this case, we have chosen a pattern fill. Here we have two swatches of paint colors and we are using the eyedropper tool to fill in the darker and lighter shades of the pattern. As discussed, our theme consists of rectangular headers with rounded corners on the diagonal, as seen here. 
The headers will not be filled in with a color, but rather the outline will be a pale yellow. We have adjusted the width of the line for better visibility. Each field will have its own header block. We have inserted further rectangles for the content areas, which will reflect the text and visuals reflecting the research output. These are in white with 33% transparency. As briefly mentioned, the lowest field will include some information about the conference itself. In this case, it's a conference on entrepreneurship. The graphic seen here is a completed template. We can now fill in our template with the content, reflecting our research output. As set out in our example, we will be working with titles in Arial and Bold, in this case, Entrepreneurship and Renewable Energy, as well as the headers for each subsection. We will be also working with Calibri as our content text. Within Shapes, you can change the orientation of the text. We will be working with this in a further section of this tutorial. In this case, we will align the title to the top in order to provide some more space for further details. We have chosen to include a photograph, key information of the researcher, as well as logos of the institutions relevant for this academic poster in the top block. Proceed in filling in the rest of the headers with the relevant titles of the sections we predetermined. For the sake of consistency, we will need to work with Arial in bold and black text. Step 4 will deal with filling in the template with content. Here I will show you some useful tips with respect to using guides and rulers, alignment tools, inserting own graphics, generating smart art, working with transparencies, and creating freeform figures. In order to work with the guides, you can go to the View menu and select Rulers, Guidelines, and Guides. This provides you with a ruler at the top and at the left of your poster, with a grid, as well as guidelines, which you can freely move around as seen here. We will now deal with the alignment and grouping of figures. In this case, we will be working with a few rectangles. In order to resize the rectangles to the same size and shape, we will be working in the Format menu. We will copy the dimensions of one rectangle to the others in order to resize it to the exact same size and shape. Now in order to align these figures, you will need to select all the figures and click Align and Align to Left. In order to distribute them equally amongst each other, you will select Distribute Vertically. Now we will work on the horizontal. In order to align them to the top, you will select Align to Top. In order to distribute the figures equally amongst each other so that the spaces in between them are equal, you will select all the figures and select Distribute Horizontally. In order to select multiple figures at the same time, you will select one figure, hold down the Control key, and select the further figures. Another useful tool is to group the figures. This allows you to move all three figures at the same time, as well as to resize them equally. Here we have duplicated the grouped rectangles. In this case, we can create a table. The groupings allow for the equal distribution of all three sets of rectangles. One can also group all three sets of rectangles into one grouping. This allows you to move around and resize the entire grouping as one object. You can always ungroup the object. We will now apply a format to one of the boxes in order to demonstrate the format painter. We will fill this box in a gray. Using the format painter tool allows you to copy the format of one of the rectangles or one object and transpose it to other objects. In this case we will be transposing it to the next rectangles as well as the entire grouped rows of rectangles below. In order to insert your own graphics or external images, you simply select Insert and then select Picture. Then you can select from the various pictures on your drive. Another option would be to simply copy-paste pictures into PowerPoint. We will now work with SmartArt, which can be found in the Insert menu. SmartArt features a variety of pre-formatted graphics, as seen here. You can select from a variety of categories, such as hierarchy, matrix, or pyramid. As an example, we will select a graphic representing a process. The graphic consists of various smaller shapes which are grouped together. You can resize these and move them around. You're also free to change the format in terms of color or effects set upon the shapes. Once you insert and position the graphic, you are free to fill it with the text corresponding to your research output.
Moving on to transparency. In order to adjust the transparency of a given shape, simply select the shape, go to format, and adjust the transparency. This works primarily when there's a solid fill. When you import a picture, there are a variety of formats that you can choose from in terms of effects and corrections. Should your image not be a PNG or SVG file with a transparent background, you can correct that by removing the background. Should you wish to change the transparency of a picture that you imported into Microsoft PowerPoint, a special procedure needs to be followed. In this case, if we import a picture of a logo, you cannot simply adjust the transparency. Therefore, you will need to draw a shape roughly the size of the image that you want to change the transparency of, fill that shape with that picture, and then adjust the transparency. Here we will be working with freeform object tools such as the curve tool to create our own freeform clip art. In this case, it will be a windmill in the section entitled Renewable Energy. Accessibility is a helpful attribute in the digital age for academic posters. In this section, we will be inserting a QR code within this eight-pointed star. Users can scan the QR code in order to access the term paper, research output, a summary of findings, or even the researcher's LinkedIn account. You can select from a variety of QR code generator websites by simply Googling the term. You can then input a term paper link, which is hosted within Dropbox or Google Sites, making sure that the sharing option is available for anyone with the link, and then you will obtain a generated QR code, which you can then download and input into your Microsoft Word file. Again, you can apply a variety of effects and adjustments to the coloring. In this case, we will make the background color of white transparent. The crop tool allows you to make both fine and large adjustments to the cropping and orientation of a selected image. By selecting an image and pasting it as an enhanced meta file or a JPEG, this allows you to conduct further artistic effects or adjustments to the image once the limit has been reached. Generally, when you host a document in the cloud, you obtain a very long link in order to access that document. Therefore, you can use URL shortener websites such as Bitly in order to obtain a shortened link for better access to that document. This link can then be featured within your academic poster. Should you have a particular color to work with, such as a corporate color, you can use the eyedropper tool or the RGB values to transpose that color to whatever object you wish. As discussed previously, you can adjust the alignment of text within shapes in a variety of manners. Prior to publishing an academic poster, a thorough proofreading and spell check should be conducted. Thereafter, you can save the poster as a PDF file by clicking File, Save As, changing the name as you wish, and selecting a PDF file rather than a PowerPoint file from the drop-down menu.